Hello and welcome to edusathi.com. Today we'll be covering the topic of average mixtures and allegation. The agenda for the presentation would be we'll talk about averages, we'll understand the concept of weighted averages followed by allegation, mixtures and we'll end this up with removal and replacement case. So let's start with average. Average is sum of the observations divided by number of observations. So whatever observations I have, I have, I sum them up and I divide them with the count of observation. The number that I get with is the average. It is also known as simple average or the mean. If you have four numbers, 1, 0, 1, 2, 0, 3, 3, 0, 5, and 4, 0, 7, and you have to find out the average, simply add them and divide it by the count. That is divided with four you'll end up with a value which is the simple average or mean. This value can also be seen as the central value of all the given figures. So the four given figures that you had were 101, 203, 305 and 407. This value is actually the central value of all the figures that are there in the, in the question. The very, very you know, important points that you have to remember when you are finding out averages, first being that the average will always lie between the lowest and the highest value. Average cannot be smaller than the lowest and cannot be more than the highest value that is there in a set of given observations. If all the observations that are given to you are equal, then the average will also be equal to that value itself. So if all the observations are equal, the average value will be equal to the same value. If all the observations are increased or decreased by the same quantity x, the average will also increase or decrease by the same quantity x. So if initially you know your average was uh, 21 and all the values have been decreased by 2, the average will also decrease by 2. So Vice versa, if all your initial values were 20, you know, all your initial values are increased by 2, the average will also increase by 2. If the value of half of the observation is increased by the same quantity x and the value of other half of the observation is decreased by the same quantity x, the value of the average will not change. Now what does that mean? You have a certain number of values, divide them into half. For half of the values, you know, uh, increase the quantity the increase should be equal in all the quantities for rest half of the value decrease the quantity decrease the observation value with the same quantity the value of average would not change because the total increase would compensate with the total decrease in the values if each of the value of the observation is multiplied by the same quantity x then the average will also be multiplied by x so your initial average i suppose is 20 all the values are multiplied by 5, the average will also become 5 times of the original. The new average will be 5 into 20, 100. The value of each observation is divided by the same quantity, then the average will also be divided. If I, I hope this is very, you know, very simple to understand. If the numbers that are given to you are in arithmetic progression, what is an arithmetic progression? A, progr a progression whose observation differ with a constant difference. Then the middle value of this arithmetic progression is the average of the entire series. If there is one middle value, that middle value is treated as the simple average or mean. If there are two middle values, then the average of the two middle values will be treated as the, or the average of the entire observations. We use simple average only if the contribution of all the observations are same. If the contribution is different, we will not be able to use simple average, we will have to use a different concept, the concept of weighted average. We will understand this concept in detail. L uh, you know, let us take an example, there is a class which is there and there are two sections. You know, in the first section, there are three students, they have obtained uh, marks equal to 30, 40 and 50. In the second uh, section, there are 5 students and their marks are 40, 50, 60, 70 and 80. Now, if I look at the average score of the first class, it will be sum of all the observation divided by the number, which is what? 40. If I look at the average of the second class, second section, it will be again the sum of observation divided by the number of observations, which comes out to be 60.
Now, if I have to find out the average of the whole class, I would not take the average of 40 and 60. That will be wrong. Why? Because the number of students that are there in both the classes are not the same. I mean to say their contributions are not the same. If the number of students are different, simple average will not give me the answer. I'll have to move to a concept of weighted average. The concept of weighted average states, if their contributions are not equal, multiply their averages with their weights and then you will find your total average. So, if I move back to the previous question only and I'm looking at the average of the whole class. So, if I have to find the average of the whole class, it will not be 40 plus 60 by 2. Instead, this 40 that I have, you know, will be multiplied by 3. Now, if you look at it, this will be actually the total score of class 1. I'll add to it the total score of class 2, which will be 60 into 5, which is what? 300 only. I'll sum up both the scores that will form a part of my numerator. So the total score which is there sums up to 420. This 420 value will be the sum of scores of total class 10 divided by the total number of people that I have which are 8 in number. This will give me the average of the entire class and not the average of 40 and 60. So if I have to write the same thing in a formula, I will look at the formula as na which is the number of people in the first class into average of that class that will give me the total of class 1 nb the number of people in class b into their average again this will give me the total of class b number of people into the average that means the total of class c when i'm adding all of them up this will be the total divided by the number of observations which are not same so i can't do you know divided with three because the number of observations are not same it will be na plus nb plus nc only if na is equal to nb is equal to nc the average weight will come out to be average of first class average of second class average of third class added up and divided with three so this if my contributions are equal then the weighted average formula reduces to a formula of simple average. So instead of knowing the absolute value of the weights, so what we have done is here Na, Nb, Nc are the absolute values of the weights that I have. In case these absolute values of weights are not available to us, we can still calculate the weighted average by using the ratio of the weights. So if instead of the actual values of Na, Nb and Nc, if I give you the average of Na, Nb and Nc, still I'll be able to solve the question. So an easier way to solve the question is always take the ratio because you will simplify your question. Let's look at some of the special cases. If we have to find out the average involving time, speed and distance, it will not be you know sum of observation divided by number of observation. The average speed would be given by total distance traveled over total time taken. So average speed is given as total distance traveled over total time taken. Average involving number system if you have first n consecutive natural numbers, the average of first n consecutive natural numbers is given by n plus 1 by 2. The average of first consecutive even natural numbers would be given by n plus 1. And the average of first n consecutive odd natural numbers is given as n. So if you look at it, if you take a series of in, uh, you know natural numbers it will form an arithmetic progression with a common difference of one and I've told you middle term is what middle term is your arithmetic mean so if you're talking about first and natural numbers the middle term would be n plus 1 by 2 the total number would be n plus 1 divided by 2 to give you your middle value if you have even numbers uh, the common difference would be treated as 2 Right. The, uh, and in case of odd natural numbers also, the common difference would be 2 in both the cases. So, there uh, I will just remove this 2 which is there in the denominator for natural numbers when I am taking the case of even and odd. Let's look at the concept of allegation. Allegation is a rule that enables us to find the ratio in which two or more components with the given characteristics 
the characteristics of the two components are already given to us we can't alter those characteristics must be mixed to obtain a mixture with the desired characteristic you want a mixture with some characteristics right available to you are two or more components with the given characteristics now in what ratio in what ratio they must be mixed to get a mixture with desired characteristics is where allocation helps us out if you have two components then the formula or the rule of allocation that needs to be applied is as follows quantity of cheaper over quantity of dearer is equal to the characteristic of dearer the given characteristic minus mean mean minus the given characteristics of the cheaper cheaper means we are just we are just differentiating the two components on the basis of the characteristic the higher value is treated as dearer the lower value is treated as cheaper so if the same thing has to be derived we look at the weighted average formula if you remember the weighted average formula it was the average of this group into quantity plus the average of this group into quantity which gives me the total divided by the total quantity which is na plus nv if i just cross multiply the terms and rearrange them the allegation formula is what i get so na over nb that means quantity of cheaper quantity of dearer a i take as an average of cheaper a generally i refer to as cheaper that will be equal to ab minus a average a average minus a a cheaper so these values you can also you know solve it out using a graphical method write down the cheaper version always on the left hand side and the dearer version on the right hand side mean will always be between the cheaper and the dearer calculate the difference between the dearer and the mean write it down under the cheaper because cheaper will actually be equal to if you look at the numerator the value of cheaper will actually be equal to the difference of the dearer and mean calculate the difference between the mean and the cheaper and write it down under the dearer because the quantity of dearer will actually be reflected by the difference of cheaper and mean so whatever is the ratio of these differences same will be the ratio of the two quantities getting mixed let's uh, take an example and elaborate it i have two varieties of rice one is at the rate of 30 kg 30 per kg another one is at the rate of 50 now this is this is the average or the characteristic of group 1 this is the characteristic of group 2 if i am mixing the two groups the average would be anywhere between 30 and 40 depending upon the ratio in which the two quantities are getting mixed if n1 if n1 is equal to n2 the average of the total will be the simple average which will give me an answer of 40 now if the ratios are not the same the average will move away from 40 it will move away it may move in any direction it may be less than 40 it may be greater than 40 now if i look here the average of the mixture which is given to me right which is given to me needs to be find out and n1 and n2 are given to me n1 is 10 and n2 is 6 so if i just look at this n1 has a greater contribution that means my answer will move towards a1 that means my answer would be less than 40 if i just look at options this will be eliminated this will be eliminated so i'm left with only two options for consideration however i will follow an average weight formula to solve this out it will be 30 into 10 plus 6 into 50 over 10 plus 6 instead of applying it at 10 plus 6 i can apply it at their ratios as well that means i can apply it at 5 and 3 as well the answer would remain the 
same the answer in this case turns out to be 37.5 because the contribution of the cheaper variety was more so the average will fall from the simple average towards the price of the cheaper quantity another example the two varieties of rice which are mixed in the ratio 3 is to 4 now they are mixed in the ratio 3 is to 4 so n1 over n2 is given to us as 3 is to 4 the price of the mixture is 80 so this is the average price is given to me 80 so that means this has to be the cheaper one has to be lesser than 80 and the dearer one has to be greater than 80 now the question is asking me find the price of the dearer one i'll just follow the allegation rule this will be a2 minus 80 and this one will be 80 minus 40 which will be 40 now their ratio will be same as the ratio of n1 is to n2 so that means they will also be in the ratio 3 is to 4 so that means if 4 parts is 40 3 parts would be 30 a2 minus 80 would be equal to 30 and i will get my answer of a2 equal to 110 let's look at another example a mixture of x liter of milk and 16 liter of water is worth 90 per pesa. So I am mixing two things. I have milk and I have water. Obviously water will be the cheaper one and milk will be the dearer one. The average price is 90 pesa. Pure milk cost 108. Water cost nothing. The question is I have to find out the quantity of milk. The quantity of water is given to Apply allegation formula 108 minus 90, which is 18, 90 minus 0, which is 90. They are in the ratio of 1 is to 5. So that means N1 and N2 has to be in the ratio 1 is to 5. So 16 is to X is in the same ratio as 1 is to 5. So the value of X that I will get will be 16 times the value of 5, which is 80. So the price of, sorry, the the uh, x liter, the x value or the quantity of milk that has to be filled up is 80 liters. Another one, this is a question which is based upon profit loss of discount but could be solved very easily if you understand the concept of allegation. The total selling price which is given to you is 2100 gains 5% in the transaction so that means this is the total gain that has happened he incurs a loss of 3% on one and profit of 7% on other so that means the first one is a loss of 3% the second one is a profit of 7% overall the profit is 5% so if I again apply allegation this will be 2 and 5 minus minus 3 the difference between 5 and minus 3 would be Eight. So they are the cost prices are in the ratio 1 is to 4. If I just look at the option, it has been a case of total profit. So that means the total SP is 2100 and there is a profit. So CP will be less than 2100 and CP, if I have to solve it out, it will be 2100 over 1.05. 5% being the profit. So the total CP has to be 2000. If I just look at the option, this cannot be the answer and this cannot be the answer because the CP adds up to 2100 which cannot be the case. Sorry. Even this cannot be the answer because the CP adds up to 2100. The ratio which is given to us is 1 is to 4. There is only this value which satisfies the ratio answer. So this turns out to be my correct option. Mixtures. A mixture is formed when two or more mixtures or pure substances are mixed. If they are mixed, they have to be mixed in certain ratio. For our understanding, we will limit our 
ourselves to homogeneous mixture that means the mixture in which the two substances are completely dissolvable into each other and the formula that we'll be using up to solve would be the allegation formula only an example of mixtures you have 49 liters of mixture the milk and water are in the ratio 6 is to 1 so that means there are total of 7 parts 6 out of 7 parts are milk and 1 out of 7 parts is water so if you solve it out you get 7 liters of water and 42 liters of milk another 11 liter of water is added so if water is added add water to water you will get 18 liter of water milk is not there's no more milk which is added there's no reduction which is happening so milk will remain constant the question is asking you find the ratio of milk and water in the resultant mixture milk remains the same water increases up so the final ratio of milk and water would be 42 is to 18 which can be simplified you know you can cancel the things uh, with 3 and you will get your simplest ratio the last case that we'll be discussing in today's uh, lecture would be mixing with replacement also known as the case of removal and replacement that means you are removing a part of the liquid and you are replacing it the replacement generally happens with a pure component so whatever mixture you have taken out you are replacing it, it in terms of volume with a pure component the total volume may or may not remain same we'll talk about a case where the quantity that is withdrawn is equal to the quantity replaced that means the volume that i have withdrawn is equal to the volume of the pure component that i am adding back so if i just look at the formula that i need to remember the formula would be the quantity that is left after certain operations would be equal to the initial quantity into 1 minus the volume which is taken out over the total volume. The case is you have V liters of pure milk. You have taken out some X liters and you have replaced it with water. You have replaced it with X liters of water. In the final thing, the volume will remain the same but the quantity of milk or the concentration of milk will fall down the final concentration will be equal to the initial concentration into 1 minus why minus because the concentration is getting reduced this will be reduced in the same you know factor as the volume taken out in comparison with the total if the same thing is happening n times i will raise it to the power n same formula of compounding with a negative rate of interest or with a negative thing because the thing is getting reduced an important point to note in this case is this formula could be applied only on the thing which is getting successively reduced so this formula can be altered in many ways you want the first one we look at the formula can be in terms of concentration volume or fraction final value in terms of concentration volume of fraction will be equal to initial the initial has to be in the same units concentration volume or fraction depending upon how do i want my final answer into one minus volume that i have taken out and replaced over the total volume volume replaced total volume replaced total raised to power n n means the number of times that i am doing the uh, iteration an example to uh, understand the concept a jar has a mixture of two liquids a and b in the ratio 4 is to 1 so i have a and b in the ratio 4 is to 1 so that means a is four parts out of five parts b is one parts out of five parts or i can write in terms of percentage this is 80 percent and this is 20 percent when 10 liter of the mixture is replaced with liquid B. So I'm taking out 10 liters and I'm adding 10 liters of B. So that means B is getting increased, but A, A is getting reduced all the time. How many 
uh, the ratio becomes 2 is to 3. So the final ratio of A is to B is given as 2 is to 3. So that means A is 2 parts out of 5 parts and B is 3 parts out of 5 parts. How many liters of liquid A was present in the jar earlier? I need a quantity thing. So I will start, I will start with something which is you know related to quantity. Final. If I talk about final A, final A is 2 by 5. Initial A is 4 by 5 into 1 minus. How much is the volume that I have taken out? 10 over the total volume, which I don't know. Raised to power 1 because I am doing it only once. So if I just solve the things, if I look at it, 1 minus 10 by V is coming out to be equal to 1 by 2. So 10 by V is 1 by 2. The, va the value of V comes out to be 20 liters. So that means there is an initial volume of 20 liters. Out of this initial volume of 20 liters, 4 parts is milk out of 5. So 4 by 5 of 20, that means 16 liter was milk. Or oh, sorry, 16 liter was liquid Another example, from a cask containing water, 9 litre is taken out. It is replaced with equal quantity of pure milk. Now, I have water, 9 litre I am taking out and I am replacing it with an equal quantity of milk. The process, the same process is done twice. The ratio of water to milk in the final, so water to milk in the final thing is 16 is to 9. Find the volume of the cask. That is the thing that we have to find. Now, look at a thing which is getting successively reduced. Water is getting successively reduced. So, I can apply the formula on water, not on milk because milk is getting added up. So, if I just start with the thing, water initially was, initially was 100% water. In terms of fraction, I would write it as 1. Final, water is 16 parts out of a total of 25. Final is equal to initial into 1 minus volume taken out over total volume raised to power cube. Why? Because the process, this process, sorry, this process is done twice. So, just solve it out. Take for to remove this twice, I will take the square root. 16 by 25 which is 4 by 5 is equal to 1 minus 9 by v or 9 by v is equal to 1 by 5 the value of v is 45 liters so the original volume of the cask comes out to be 45 liters